special. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first of all, just thank you all for sticking around all the way to the end of our summit today. Um, I get the sense that uh, this is a little bit of a different audience than we had this morning, so I'll be really interested to hear uh, what some of your comments might be at the end. Um, my name is David Koenig. I'm a history teacher at Washington Latin Public Charter School. Uh, this is a new school for me this year. For the five years previous, I was a teacher at Paul Public Charter School. Um, like Christian, in the 2016-17 school year, I organized the teaching staff at Paul into a union affiliated with the AFT. Um, unlike Christian and teachers at Chavez, our efforts ultimately fell short. Um, the primary reason for that um, is that, as Christian said at Chavez, uh, our board fought back against our union uh, with everything that they had. Uh, they employed um, captive audience meetings where we were forced to listen to speeches about how bad unions are, um, how they are destructive to the kids. Um, people were pulled into one-on-one -on -one meetings um, to be talked out of their support for the union. Um, people were um, given veiled threats about what might happen to them if they continue to support the union. Um, and then there was a lot of information, misinformation that was sent out uh, via email um, and in those captive audience meetings. Um, all of this was, uh, they were aided in all of this by the law firm that they employed, uh, the law firm of Jones Day, uh, which if you don't know is an extremely high priced law firm. Um, we also know via a FOIA request um, that at the very least they were discussing their anti-union campaign uh, with the public charter school board. Whether they were actually coordinating their efforts is a, an unanswered question at this point. Um, but at any rate, uh, their anti-union campaign was successful. Uh, they ate away at our support, one teacher at a time, two teachers at a time uh, began to drop off uh, to the point where two days before we were scheduled to have our election, the AFT uh, was uncomfortable with the level of support that we had and they decided to cancel the election so we never got to vote. Um, this raises the question in my mind, um, I don't know about any of you, why did our board fight so hard against efforts by their teachers to organize and to speak with a collective voice in our school. Um, why is the board and the wider charter school movement, the charter school lobby, uh, so opposed to teacher organizations? Uh, I have my own thoughts about that, which I'll, I'll share a little of in a minute or two. Um, but the larger point that, that I want to make is that despite that setback, I still very much believe in the, the power and the potential of teachers organizations to bring about positive changes within their schools uh, and within the charter school system uh, that we are a part of. Um, I think that teachers organizations and charter schools um, have the potential to do two very important things. Um, one is to activate teachers in larger policy debates about the charter school system and two is possibly to uh, play a role in beginning to rebuild the sense of community that in many cases has been lost uh, in the very rapid charterization uh, of our city schools. Um, so the, the school that I work at right now, Washington Latin, is a, a different type of charter school. Um, unlike most places that I've been and that I've heard of, um, the administration at Latin actually encourages teachers to think and uh, talk with each other about policy issues. I don't know that they would be all that excited about us talking about organizing a union. That might be a step too far for them. Um, but one example of this is that once a month we have a meeting uh, to discuss, a small group meeting, to discuss various classical texts. Uh, I attended my first one of these a few weeks ago, um, and the conversation was around um, a text called the Melian Dialogues by Thucydides, the famous Greek historian. Um, it's about the people of Milos being caught in between Athens and Sparta during the Peloponnesian War. Um, they were in a very tough situation between a rock and a hard place and were very powerless. Uh, during that conversation, we kind of turned to the powerlessness that we experienced as charter school teachers, and then we just started to talk more broadly about the, the charter system itself. And it turned out that all of the five or six teachers in that room had very serious doubts and concerns about the effects that charter schools are having on our city and on education in our city. Um, and the concerns, the individual concerns varied. Um, but the point is that we all had these concerns and none of us had ever talked with each other about them, at least not in any formal setting. Um, and I just wonder what sort of additional conversations could we have and what sort of actions could we take 
uh, to affect policy change if we had a permanent organization. Um, and I think that having an organization of teachers uh, is critical for a couple reasons. Uh, number one, because teachers need the protection of an organization if they're going to speak freely uh, about their schools and changes that need to be made in their schools and about the charter school system itself. Um, and number two, teachers speaking collectively is just much more powerful than a few people um, speaking individually. Um, I can stand on the street corner and yell all I want about the fact that I believe that charter schools are a piece of the larger privatization movement in our country uh, that is seeking to privatize just about everything, um, education being one of those things, um, but that's not going to do a whole lot of good. But if I'm part of, part of an organization that can talk about and speak collectively on that issue, then that might have a little bit more of an impact. Uh, the second thing that I think that teachers organizations can really do in charter schools is to perhaps begin to rebuild a sense of community. One of the biggest concerns that a lot of the teachers had in that meeting uh, about the Million Dialogues was that um, as we transition to charter schools, um, community has been lost in many cases. Uh, our school, Washington Latin, is housed in a former DCPS elementary school called Rudolph Elementary, uh, which was a really beloved neighborhood institution for a long time. And a lot of people in the neighborhood were very dismayed when that school closed down and a charter school moved in. Um, there's another teacher that shared a very similar story about uh, Inspired Teaching School, which had previously been Shade Elementary. Um, and a lot of the students that had attended Shade felt um, really unmoored from their community because they no longer had that, that school to anchor the community. Um, I know that uh, urban schools have uh, a lot of different problems. Um, they're not perfect. They have a lot of improvements that they can make. Um, but despite a lot of the issues, they have served that role of, of being a, an anchor to a lot of communities. Um, I personally have experienced uh, the loss of community that charter schools have brought about just in the few months that I've left Paul. I've run into several of my students in that time, um, just run into them because I'm still in the neighborhood, and each and every one of them has said something like, you know, I went back to visit the other day, and <coughs> you weren't there, Mr. Koenig, and this teacher wasn't there, and this teacher wasn't there, uh, and I just, it just doesn't even feel like the same school that I went to a couple years ago. Um, I think that by improving stability, um, by creating more of a sense of institutionalism in charter school staffs, that teachers' organizations can maybe contribute a little bit to rebuilding that community. I know that this is a, a very large, uh, seemingly intractable issue, um, but I think that teachers' organizations can at least play a role um, in addressing it. At any rate, that is what I think. I would repeat uh, the same ask that Christian made of everybody. Um, if you are a uh, a school official uh, and, your and your teachers are seeking to organize, please consider supporting them. Please consider being proactive and reaching out to your teachers. Ask them would they like to have an organization that provides them with protections, that provides them with some sort of collective voice. Uh, if you're a parent, talk to your children's teachers about that. If you're a teacher, consider talking to your colleagues about the possibility of creating an organization in your school. Um, that uh, is it.